lot of people requested I review this movie, and now I know why. Like, this is really bad. I've said before that I'm done reviewing superhero movies. I believe the exact quote was, I'm done talking about these fucking stupid movies, stop requesting them. But rest assured, I don't consider this film a superhero movie, or even a movie really. It's like calling The Fly a superhero movie. This movie's kind of baffling. You can look at a movie like The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and you can understand why it's bad. Like, you can watch it and it has product placement and it has corny scenes and ridiculous action and you understand why from a marketing perspective. Good! <laughs> got, got it! Great! Good! But this movie, I don't know what anyone was thinking. Nothing makes any sense at all and I don't know why they made this movie or how this... This idea of like a weird David Cronenberg body horror film made its way into a Fantastic Four movie. This movie's full of grotesque violence and disturbing images, and then you see ads like this. Now that's a. You want that to go again, sweetie? Like, what were they trying to do? Well, let's try to figure it out together. Here are the. Re Stupid kids. I hate children. I hate them more than anything on this planet. They're rude, stupid, ugly, annoying, smelly, just disgusting creatures. One of my favorite films of all time is Children of Men, not because of the cinematography or anything. It's because the movie takes place in a world where there are no children. All these people were crying over this kid dying. Fuck that kid. I'm glad he's dead. Anyway, the Fantastic Four starts with kids. From the opening credits, you hear some dumb kid babbling on about something. Apparently these kids were supposed to do a report on what they wanted to do when they grew up or something. Ever since I was three, I wanted to play quarterback for the New York Giants, like my personal hero, Eli Manning. Annual salary is between 10 and 20 million dollars a year. Thank you. Was that his whole report? It was like 10 seconds. I'm trying to guess what grade this kid's in. I'm looking at the classroom and some of these kids are like college students. Like, okay, this kid looks like he's in 7th grade. This girl looks like she's 15. Who the fuck is this guy? Also, all the kids are sitting the exact same way. They're leaning back on their chairs with one hand on their lap and the other hand in their book. It's like some weird fucking cult of kids. But once I test on biological materials, right, I can... Thank you, Mr. Richards. This is all very interesting. Will you let the kid the give his report? No school works like this. First of all, what, what is this project supposed to be? The kid that came before him just said what he wanted to be and how much it paid. We didn't even get to see the kid sit down. It cuts from the opening title cards to just read sitting there. Who is this kid that gave the report? Was it this kid? Then this kid starts speaking and he clearly has no idea what he's saying. He was just given lines to read and he has no idea what anything he's saying means. It's already possible to transport quantum information from one location to another. Cellular level. Bottom line, kids can't act. They suck, and whenever they're in a scene, they ruin the movie, unless they're being brutally murdered. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, but nine times out of ten, kids suck. And finding a good child actor is pretty rare. But not only are these children terrible actors, they are given tons of complicated dialogue and emotional scenes. These scenes don't even need to be in the movie. They could have just started the movie here, with them in high school. That would have been fine, but I guess they wanted to appeal to little kids going to see this movie, right? Ah! Ah! Nothing anyone does makes any sense. So the real start of the movie is this scene. Reed makes this thing teleport, and then it teleports back. And the guy at the science fair says, You're disqualified. Wait, what? This is a science fair, not a magic competition. What? Aren't you gonna ask how he did it? He probably has a paper explaining how. Every science fair project has a thesis that goes with it. Wasn't that guy his teacher at the beginning of the movie? So I'm gonna assume the guy is a science teacher since he's at the science fair, and yet he had him give a report on his career when he was 12? How is that related to science? Shouldn't you be teaching the kids about genetics instead of having this stupid fucking kid give a report on how he wants to be like Eli Manning when he grows up? Who cares? So then Freddy from House of Cards shows up and is like, Hey, can you really make things teleport? And Miles Teller's like, yeah. And Freddy's like, okay, you work for me now. Meanwhile, Ben and Sue just stand there and yet they're allowed to come along for some reason? Why is this guy at a high school science fair? Does he really think he's gonna find something amazing? Most of the time he's probably looking at like baking soda volcanoes.
And what's this kid's project? Are you fucking kidding me? So then these kids are taken out of high school and they work for a multi-million dollar company now. I think they're supposed to be in high school. They look like they're 25. So they make the teleporting thing work and the teleporter can go to an alternate dimension. So they succeed in building the teleporter thing, but the problem is the company won't let them go because they're not trained to be there. They're just scientists. This isn't the school science fair anymore. We have to bring in help now. And they're absolutely right. You have no training. You know how much training you need to go to space? I thought you were scientists. So then they just decide, screw them, we're gonna go on the teleporter. Apparently there's no security anywhere. There's an alert that comes up on Sue's screen when they activate the teleporter, but I guess only she gets that alert. No one else, like this guy or that guy. Look, we started this thing together. We're going together. I'm not taking no for an answer. I need you to come. Because we're going tonight, I told the guys that I'm not going without you. What? You didn't start it together. You didn't do anything. You even forgot the model car during the science fair. Model, the model car, please, Ben. I don't have a model car. Why don't you have the model car? The car. I ben has no idea what he's doing, and you're putting him in danger, you moron. So am I supposed to like these people? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it was like a fairy dust sound. <laughs> So fire gets in Johnny's pod, that's how he becomes the human torch. Ben is combined with rocks, so he becomes the thing. Reed can just stretch now, cuz, just cuz. And then Sue gets hit with an energy blast, so she turns invisible. Well, they tried to make two of the four make sense. Then the movie starts getting interesting. We finally get to see them become the heroes we all know and lo oh. So yeah, the most interesting part of the movie, which is them becoming heroes, is completely glossed over to make way for scenes of nothing happening. The rest of the movie is just boring, predictable nonsense. Just scenes of people talking and random, boring action. Then they go back to the other dimension. Doctor Doom is there, and for some reason, he has a cape? Like, where'd he get that? We're a team now, and there's four of us, so we should come up with a name for it. The Human Torch and the Torchettes. How about the big brain and his neurons? How about two guys, a girl, and the thing that nobody wanted? Guys, I got it. Ready? Yeah. Wow, I literally want to kill myself. Characters, in theory. We're introduced to the characters in modern day, and they somehow manage to be even more unlikable than the kid versions of them. Reed Richards is just a dick. You're a dick. Ben Grimm is an incompetent idiot. I don't have a mental car. Sue Storm is a woman, and Johnny Storm doesn't even fit in this movie. Don't get used to this. I'm just here to get my car back. He just wants his car back? And why do you want to go through the teleporter if he just wanted his car back? Why would he risk his life to do that? We don't need any more help. Yes, you do. But why do you need him? He can build anything. Okay, you can just hire a bunch of Mexicans. I think the worst character in this movie by far is Sue. She has no emotion about anything. She gives every line exactly the same way, whether it's emotional or scientific or funny. I'm trying! As a matter of fact, no one has any emotion about anything. Dr. Doom over here. No one seems excited or sad or angry about anything. I'll say this, at least we have a villain whose motivation makes sense. Unlike that other guy. See, Dr. Doom is jealous of Miles Teller because he wants to be with Sue Storm because she's just as boring as he is. And he hates the fact that they left him behind to die. And maybe some of that weird alien goo stuff got in his head and made him like a weirdo. So like, I understand why he's doing the things he does. So I'll give the movie one point for that. But the rest of the characters suck. No one in this movie is a hero. These characters do nothing to redeem themselves the entire movie. They aren't heroic or brave at all. Reed abandons his friends. They all get drunk and talk about how they want to be the first ones to go to the alternate dimension. Their arrogance and stupidity gets tons of people killed, including their own father. They hold the US government hostage and demand a lab and resources from them. Reed makes promises he can't keep. Johnny is an asshole to his father. They leave their friend behind to die. They put innocent people in harm's way. What great role models for kids. Guys, what are you doing? Um, food everywhere. Mm, no, this movie's for kids, right? Reed, do something, please! 
Let's do the same thing again. Like really, Doctor Doom again? I'm not a big Fantastic Four guy, but are there any other villains in these comics that they can use besides Doctor Doom? <laughs> He's the bad guy in every single Fantastic Four movie. How about this? They put a monkey in the teleporter and to test it. Have something go wrong and the monkey gets superpowers and he starts going crazy. Hell, it's more interesting than just Doctor Doom again. So Doctor Doom becomes Doctor Doom and he kills people. Again. Then they fight Doctor Doom. Again. And guess who wins? Fantastic Four. Again. Separately they can't beat him, but when they work together they can. Again. I remember seeing the trailer to this movie and being really annoyed at the beginning. Not just at the fact that there were kids in it, but the fact that the movie starts when they're kids. We have to go through this whole backstory again. I know it already. They go to space and get fucked up. Why do I need to see this origin story again? If you don't know the backstory, then maybe throw in like one line of dialogue to explain it. Like, hey, remember when we were normal and then we built a teleporter to another dimension and tried it out at night when we were drunk? Then we got there and tried started taking night night and fell drunk. Drunk. I think, you know, Darker compared to the first ones. Yes, I think just more realistic in the sense of reality, uh, you know, I think that's kind of what we did. Combining reality and fantasy. This movie tries to be a realistic science fiction film and a cheesy dumb superhero movie at the same time. It fails at both. Ironically, the film ends up combining elements that don't work alongside each other, and they ended up creating a monster. There are some good scenes in this movie, especially when they all first get their powers. This scene is pretty cool, but it doesn't fit in the movie. The problem isn't that it's dark, it's that it's not dark all the time. It goes from silly, stupid schlock to like, realistic, scientific things. This one is definitely going on Instagram. I've seen plenty of lists that are like, things the new Fantastic Four does right, or reasons the Fantastic Four is good, or reasons it's better than the other Fantastic Four movies. The fact that people think this Fantastic Four movie is the best out of the whole series, first of all, it says a lot about the Fantastic Four. And second of all, I don't understand it, because all of the other movies, which I have reviewed before, are infinitely more entertaining than this one, which is just boring. But people still have those reasons, which I've written right here, why they like this movie. It's progressive. No. When I first heard Michael B. Jordan was playing the Human Torch, I was kind of excited. I was almost positive the movie would suck. I think everyone thought that. But Michael B. Jordan is perfect for the role. And perhaps if he had things to work with, he would have been good. What started to bother me was how much controversy this created. Some people didn't want to see this movie just because Johnny Storm was now black. And some people were praising the movie, saying it was very progressive. I was just like, does anyone really care? He's just a guy. He's gonna read lines and, um, act. So if the studio is gonna try to be progressive and make Johnny Storm black, maybe they should have written a character for him. Not only should they have written a character for him, they should have written a character that was redeeming and likable. But every character in this movie is a cliche, so why not him? White teenagers are really smart, wimpy, and ambitious. They want to change the world and help people with no reward. I don't wanna be famous. I just want my work to make a difference. Then the only black character in the film besides the father is a reckless, arrogant, rude, selfish, egotistical delinquent who only ever does anything for profit and prestige. He has no charm or discernible skill set other than building things. Like, did they not realize how horrible this sounded when they wrote it? There's a good movie in here somewhere. No. There is a good movie in every movie somewhere. Potential is just that. Potential. But I'm not gonna give a movie credit for things it never does. As a matter of fact, that makes this movie worse. Cause to me, there are some good things about this movie. And there are some scary scenes and some interesting ideas. But that's all they are, interesting ideas. 
I give credit to Josh Trank for those, because even though the movie is bad, I heard about all the behind the scenes troubles, and how the studio just got sick of him and fired him and tried to fix the mess that he created. They ended up creating a bigger mess. Marvel might get the rights to the Fantastic Four back. Okay. Does that make the movie better? Am I gonna get my money back? Doctor Doom is accurate to the comics. You know, I really enjoyed Doctor Doom in this movie. He's probably the best character in the film. He was pretty good. For the 10 minutes he was in it. These people are full of shit. You can fix this movie very easily. You know how? Adapt the comic book. There are tons of good stories right there in front of you. All you had to do was grab one and remake it shot for shot. Is it the most creative way to make a Fantastic Four movie? No. Is it the most original way? No. But I think fans of this comic would have preferred that. I'd say take the safe route. I'm not gonna say a movie like Ant-Man is memorable, but at least it wasn't total shit. And maybe if you made an average movie instead of a bad movie, you wouldn't have gotten tons and tons of hate. Like, how fucking bad does a movie have to be for me to say, just copy what Ant-Man and Age of Ultron did? In conclusion, this movie's bad, which is a shame. Josh Trank wanted to make a good movie, and I don't know if I should blame him for this giant piece of shit. I will because he's the director, and that's what the director does. Takes all the praise, or all the blame. I think he got too carried away with this film. I like all the actors in this film as well. And they've proven that they can shine if given the right role. Even Kate Mara, who is the weakest of all of them, is still a solid actress. But they couldn't do anything because they had nothing to work with. It was certainly an experience. Is it as bad as everyone says it is? No. I've seen much worse, and I've reviewed much worse. It's far from the worst movie I've ever talked about, but still. It's just a disaster. It's just rare to see a film this convoluted and nonsensical. Actually, it's pretty common now.